Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro. I'm a professor in the Department of Family and Community Medicine at the University of Toronto, and I sit on the Board of Trustees of the North American Menopause Society. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Hadeen Jaffe, who is an Associate Professor of Psychiatry at Harvard Medical School with a joint position at Brigham and Women's Hospital and the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston. So if I'm a midlife woman, me and all my friends, we all have sleep problems. Yeah. Usually not a problem getting to sleep, Staying asleep is an issue. What do we do and where do we go and how do we get it, you know, get rid of this? Yeah. So I, the first thing to do is to recognize that it's a problem. I think some people think that it's normal, that it's a normal part of aging in midlife. And although you do see a lot of sleep changes in midlife, it's not normal to have substantially uh, unrefreshing sleep and to be waking up. So what is normal in terms of an age-related change that, that would just be okay. Yes, so people tend to get sleepier a little earlier in the evenings, shift their clock a little bit. Um, sometimes people will have more disruptive sleep. It's okay to get up to go to the bathroom and go right back to sleep. That's all acceptable. Um, it's, it's abnormal when you can't go back to sleep, when you can't fall back asleep. Um, what about medications over the counter? There's so many different things that I can try that are advertised. Are those things safe? I would say that before even considering over-the-counter treatments, there are common, um, easy-to-implement behavioral practices that people should be aware of. And the most important one to know about is sleep hygiene. Just like dental hygiene, they're good sleep practices. Many people think about don't drink coffee, you know, don't fall asleep watching TV, but for middle-of-the-night awakenings, what people aren't as aware of is how important it is to cover your clock, to not know what time it is and secondarily to get out of bed if you can't fall back asleep for a period of time. And those two practices, as hard as it is to break the cycle of checking your phone in the middle of the night, are hugely effective and really don't have any side effects. So why get out of bed? What, ha what happens then? How will that help break the cycle? You, you break the association of the frustration of not being able to fall back asleep with being in your bed and you get your mind onto something else. You do some light reading, low light, no screens, um, breaks the cycle, and it makes it much easier to So not to sleep. watch TV in the middle of the night? No screens. No screens. <laughs> no screens. Really, okay. Yeah. And when is it time for me to go see my doctor? So if, if those things are tried and um, really implemented and not letting yourself nap during the day, not letting yourself sleep in, getting to bed when you're tired, and they're not working and it's going on for at least a few weeks or it's hugely disruptive because of the impact on your life. Um, it's important to go to see your primary care doctor. Um, most primary care doctors are accustomed to managing sleep problems. Um, I think a lot of gynecologists are very comfortable in midlife women you know, managing that as well. And of course, psychiatrists would know how to manage uh, insomnia um, as would sleep doctors. So just the difference between if I'm waking up because of my hot flashes, that takes us in a direction of dealing with my hot flashes. Right. But for those that's not hot flash related, in terms of prescription medications that doctors give, how long can you safely be on them? So there, there are FDA approved treatments for uh, insomnia. Um, there are a number of different uh, prescribed medications. They all are meant to be used for a short period of time. And it's not that we can't use them in an extended period of time when the risk-benefit decision is, is appropriate, but they're not meant to be a long-term solution for most women. The idea is really to break the cycle, and I tell people to take something every night for a week and make sure they break the cycle of being able to sleep and not wake up repeatedly, and then to try going back off of them and use their sleep hygiene practices. Thank you so much. Thank you.